There are four practical do's and don'ts that affect your inflammatory state, stay through controlling cortisol. The majority of patients that I see have been told that they have some inflammation. Some say they can even feel the inflammation. Maybe the inflammation even showed up in their blood work. And there's a lot of buzz out now in the popular media about inflammation. But the question is, why? Why is everyone so inflamed? And what do most people have in common that make them so? There's a variety of reasons for this, including toxins in the environment and in the foods that we eat. But the main answer might surprise you. It's cortisol. You see, cortisol, which is a hormone produced in your adrenal glands, it's the body's own anti-inflammatory molecule. And I'll tell you why it's so important in a minute. Just so that you understand what inflammation actually is and its effects on your body, good and bad, let's talk about that first. There's a big difference between acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation, short term, is absolutely necessary for our body to heal and repair. Whereas chronic inflammation, it's not necessary and it's a problem. Chronic inflammation is connected to just about every chronic disease in modern society, from cardiovascular disease to cancer to diabetes and autoimmune disease. And it's best defined as an immune system that's gone unchecked. The challenge is that chronic inflammation is still relatively poorly understood and, and somewhat poorly defined. The two common markers of inflammation in the body that conventional physicians will look at in the blood are a SED rate or, or ESR and a CRP, or it's a C-reactive protein. These blood markers are they're a bit rudimentary, but at least it's a start. The thing is, there's numerous other immune markers in the blood that may be elevated with chronic inflammation, even if your SED rate or CRP are normal. Let's say you know you have chronic inflammation and it showed up in your blood. Conventional treatment for chronic inflammation is often worse than the disease. Conventional treatment includes anti-inflammatories, immunosuppressive drugs, and steroids. And the chronic use of these medications is not advisable, even by them, because of all the side effects. The problem with treating inflammation that way is that those immunosuppressants and anti-inflammatories they're like a sledgehammer to the immune system, which then prevents the immune system from being able to do its normal daily functions like healing and wound repair, fighting off microbes and infections. So here's how that works. The chemical mediators of the immune system, they're called cytokines and interleukins. These are immune chemicals that float around in the blood, kind of like hormones. Some are pro-inflammatory and some are anti-inflammatory, and they need to remain in balance. Well, with chronic inflammation, this balance is lost and the scales are tipped in the direction of pro-inflammatory molecules. Now, these molecules, they exist in the blood. And because the blood goes everywhere, these inflammatory molecules go everywhere, which is why the symptoms of chronic inflammation can be so diverse. Chronic inflammation can be found in the heart, the lungs, the nerves, the immune system, the digestive system, and more. And it's linked to cardiovascular disease, neuro neurodegenerative disorders, autoimmune diseases of all kinds. Metabolic problems like type 2 diabetes, obesity, digestive disorders, hormone problems, and even just a general tendency towards itises, like arthritis and tendonitis, bursitis, neuritis, colitis, I mean, the list goes on. So I mentioned cortisol before. Cortisol is the body's primary anti-inflammatory molecule. It's produced by the adrenals in response to any stress on the body, injury, infection, trauma, or even standing up and giving a speech in front of people or getting cut off in traffic. But cortisol does a few things. It helps to mobilize our body and its resources for action in response to a stressor, and it assists in that fight or flight response. Plus, it helps to initiate healing of an injury with its anti-inflammatory actions. Interestingly, all of the anti-inflammatory steroids that are available on the market today, including hydrocortisone, prednisone, and others, they're mimics of our body's own anti-inflammatory molecule, cortisol. Thing is, you can have too much or too little of a good thing. So while short-term production of cortisol and its anti-inflammatory immune modulating properties is essential and beneficial, chronic overproduction of cortisol can become immunosuppressive and can compromise our ability to heal, to resolve inflammation, and then to repair. So what if there was a condition or a physiologic state that compromises our body's ability to produce this anti-inflammatory molecule cortisol in a balanced and regulated way? Well, it turns out there is just such a condition, adrenal fatigue which is actually a condition of a dysregulated stress response system as a whole, predisposes people to chronic inflammatory conditions of all kinds because of this cortisol connection. This dysfunction of a stress response leads to the dysregulation of the production of cortisol and other stress hormones, sometimes in excess and other times in deficit. This means that treating and healing adrenal fatigue and regulating cortisol runs parallel to getting your body into an anti-inflammatory state. By the way, check out my other videos that pop up on the screen after this. I talk about how I heal adrenal fatigue and balance out that cortisol. 
Now, while we're working on healing that underlying cause, which takes some guidance and time, because there's a lot to it, there are four practical do's and don'ts that affect your inflammatory state, state through controlling cortisol. One, sugar and processed foods. Certain chemicals in the food we eat, in the air we breathe, and in the products that we use on our body in our home are pro-inflammatory. Limit them. Ultra-processed foods are a key way that we're exposed to these pro-inflammatory chemicals in the thousands. Sugar, in almost all its forms, is also pro-inflammatory. Gradual and increasing avoidance of exposure to these substances is very much recommended. Foods in all their natural state, of all kinds, are anti-inflammatory. Now, the challenge is that our food supply has been so adulterated and has been so for generations that we accept far too many substances as food that really shouldn't be labeled as such. The idea of shopping the perimeter of the supermarket kind of comes to mind here. Two, food sources. Certain foods are known as more of an anti-inflammatory food. Fish and seafood that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, they fall into this category. The omega-3 fatty acids are known for their properties in controlling and actually helping resolve the inflammatory process. Believe it or not, meat and organs from animals are also anti-inflammatory. As long as what you're eating comes from animals consuming their natural diet, like grass-fed beef, raw milk, eggs, and meat from chickens raised in their natural habitat. These foods are not pro-inflammatory outright, as some insist, but they can be depending on their source. It's primarily this unnatural habitat and artificial diets that are forced to consume and the hormones and antibiotics that are used in these, in these animals, which makes them pro-inflammatory. Another way in which food can be pro-inflammatory is if we develop an allergy or sensitivity to that food. I see gluten and dairy allergies all the time in my patients as a result of the immune and digestive system being suppressed from a broken stress physiology. Now, once these sensitivities are recognized, it definitely makes sense to temporarily avoid them in your diet. Ultimately, to control chronic inflammation, we need to live and eat in a way that we were designed, the way our ancestors lived and ate. Three, your daily routine. This next recommendation can be challenge, challenging to accept for some. Living how our ancestors did is something to examine and deeply appreciate. Our ancestors lived without chronic inflammation and how they spent their time affected that. Basically, our lives need to be more closely tied to mother nature. Our days should be more closely tied to the cycles of the sun and the moon, which is going to affect cortisol levels. Realigning our life in accordance with Mother Nature is one of the key pieces of that therapeutic puzzle for all of my patients who are dealing with chronic diseases of all kinds. Not only does this help control the common triggers for chronic inflammation, but it also strengthens our body's own inherent anti-inflammatory system that we need in good working order so that we can live our life to the fullest in the years to come. Find nature. Experience it fully with all your senses. Put your bare feet on the ground or make friends with a potted plant even. These are, these are good places to start. Four, movement. We all need to move our bodies as much as we are able to on a daily basis. And this allows us to pump nutrients into the tissues and waste products away. But what exercise and movement primarily do is they assist in the regulating of proper cellular function. So deep within our body, inside our organs, deep in our tissues are our cells. And these trillions of cells in, in our body, they're responsible for working together to properly optimize health and prevent disease. Exercises, it optimizes their function. Now, this gets into changing genetic expression through epigenetics, assisting in the cleanup of metabolic debris within the cells and more, all of which I talked about on other videos on this channel. Exercise is connected to extending longevity and reducing the risk of morbidity and mortality caused by every chronic disease in society today. Now, one special note for anybody suffering from adrenal fatigue who also has compromised energy from mitochondrial dysfunction, do not move or exercise more than your current capacity. For some, movement entails simple activities of daily living. Others can handle short walks. Others have enough energy to sustain simple stretches or simple yoga, whereas others can actually sustain exercise uh, as a routine like we typically think of it. The key here is to listen to your body and don't push beyond your capacity, no matter how limited your movement parameters are, if you do this, gradually those parameters will expand. Each one of these things is essential to regulating your stress physiology, which in turn helps regulate and control inflammation through the effects of cortisol. But they're important for all of us, but doubly so for people with adrenal fatigue. Even these simple changes can expedite that healing process exponentially. I'd love to hear what you think about these do's and don'ts about inflammation. So please leave your comment or question below and don't forget to hit subscribe. So you're notified when I release a new video. 
And if you've got an idea for a subject uh, you want me to talk about, put that in the comments below too, and I'll see what I can do. All my best.